Hello and welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show where I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines in entertainment and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell and today we have a very, very big show. We're of course going to be discussing the 2024 Grammy Awards and yes, we're going to get into Taylor Swift's major surprise announcement. But first, let's go over what happened on music's biggest night. Sunday night was the Grammy Awards. And, you know, I made my predictions last week. Some were right. Most were wrong, honestly. Um, but I think I got, I, I wasn't surprised by the people who won the major awards, except for maybe one person shocked me. But let's get into who won some of the big awards of the night. Just a reminder, there is there was a Grammy Award presentation that happened prior to the major telecast that we sh that we saw last night. So a lot of people got awards that were not shown on camera. In fact, the actual Grammys broadcast is like 70% performances and 30% awards. There actually are not that many awards that are given out in the actual broadcast. But anyway, let's go through the major categories. So starting off with best new artist, which I had predicted was going to be Ice Spice. And I was pretty certain about that because she's really blown up in the last year. She's everywhere. People love her. I was almost certain that she was going to win this award. And she didn't because Victoria Monet won. She seemed shocked. I think people in the room were probably surprised because I, I even feel like if if you had told me Ice Spice isn't going to win the award, I honestly would have said Noah Khan would, would win. I felt like he was in that like second place spot, but no. It was Victoria, uh, and she had a great speech. She went on a little long, but I felt like she went up there with something to say. She spoke from the heart, and I really loved her moment. Very happy for her, and a deserving artist. She's been working very hard for a long time, and it's always great to see the artists that are just like clawing their way through the music industry for years and years and years, and then finally get their moment. You'll love to see it. Okay, record of the year. Now, I had predicted this as being Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For, but it wasn't. It was Miley Cyrus for Flowers. I should have seen this coming, honestly, because Flowers was like such a big hit last year. It was everywhere. You couldn't turn on the radio. You couldn't go to the grocery store without hearing that song all the time. It was it was genuinely everywhere. So I, I should have seen... I, I should have predicted that, honestly, thinking more about it, just how major that song was. Um, Miley also stole the show. She had an amazing performance. She won her her first Grammy ever um, about an hour before she won Record of the Year. Um, she won for like pop performance for the same song, Flowers, and just had a great speech going up again, accepting this one. She just... She felt very comfortable, very effortless on stage. And uh, I loved seeing her finally get her moment because she's been obviously working in Hollywood for so many years. She's so talented. Um, and I feel like she's always, people have kind of perceived her as this Disney star and haven't really taken her very seriously as an actual artist. But she obviously has an amazing voice. She's a great songwriter. So I'm happy that she, she got her recognition. Speaking of Billie Eilish, song of the year, which I had predicted may potentially possibly go to Taylor Swift because she has never won that award. Billie Eilish took home Song of the Year. So I predicted Billie for record. She ended up getting Song. So I'm going to kind of count it as a win for myself, even though it was the wrong category. Um, but love seeing Billie up there. I, get, I feel like Billie is very much a Grammy award show darling. Like she's, anytime Billie Eilish is nominated for awards, you kind of have a feeling that she's going to at least get a couple just because she has, I don't know, people just really love her in the industry. And also she's so talented and she's so gifted. And the fact that she works with her brother and like, they just have this amazing partnership and, um, and she's great. And again, a very deserving song, a song that has really like had a moment with the Barbie movie. So happy to see that happen. 
And then finally, the last category of the night, album of the year presented by the one and only Celine Dion. So wonderful to see her there. If you have, you know, read the news recently or in the last couple years, Celine has been going through a lot of health struggles. She stopped performing, um, had to end her residency in Las Vegas. Um, and so to see her up there presenting that award was a really amazing moment. And who won album of the year? Miss Taylor Swift, breaking the record for the most album of the year Grammy wins of all time. She was tied, I believe, with three prior to winning last night. She was tied with, I think, Stevie Wonder, Frank Sinatra, and somebody else. I can't remember who exactly it was. Um, but she was tied with, with three. And then now having won her fourth, she has broken the record. She has won the most album of the year Grammys ever, which is crazy considering the fact that she's 34 years old. <laughs> like she could win this award a number of more times over the course of her career and, and end up with an insane amount. And again, like I said in the predictions, even though Midnight's, it's not my favorite Taylor Swift album of all time. It's not even in my top five. There's other albums that I would have given album of the year to that didn't get album of the year from Taylor's discography. But you cannot ignore, you cannot deny the fact that that album and Taylor just as an artist herself is like, the woman of the moment. And it, it just feels, it would just have felt weird to have given it to somebody else, even though I feel like there were other albums nominated that were better albums. Taylor was, it's just hard to ignore the power that she has and the power of that album because it really, it's been everywhere for the last year and a half. Um, I will, we'll get back to Taylor Swift in a little bit um, and something that happened earlier in the evening, but I didn't want to not forget to um, shout out Luke Holmes and Tracy Chapman, who performed Fast Car together. For those who don't know, Tracy Chapman, her song Fast Car came out a number of years ago. Excellent song. Luke Holmes, country singer, has always loved that song. He said it was like one of the very first songs he learned to play on the guitar. He's always been a fan of that song. And on his most recent album, he did a cover of Fast Car that people loved. It went everywhere. It was a massive, massive song, massive hit for him as a cover. And people who maybe didn't know the original version, Tracy Chapman's version, were rediscovering the, the song through Luke Combs. Well, Luke, that song was nominated for a Grammy this year. And Luke brought Tracy, Tracy Chapman out with him to perform the song together. It was a really beautiful moment, I think, giving Tracy like this, this chance, this moment to be acknowledged for her work so many years later was really special. Uh, and then also just like the, the, the difference between Luke Combs' performance of that song and Tracy's per performance of that song and like putting them together. It was very, very cool. It was really unique uh, and a very, very special moment. It, feel, it felt like people in, in the crowd really loved it and probably pe people at home as well. I also wanted to say too, I feel like I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure every single award that was given out on the actual broadcast was won by a woman, <laughs> except for Jay-Z did go up to accept the uh, Dr. Dre Global Impact Award. Um, but other than that, I think every other category, a woman went on stage to accept. They won, um, which is cool. And it also, I feel like very much, it encapsulates the year that we just had in music, which was really the year of women. Like women dominated the radio, touring, album sales, all the things. So it felt right that that's how it, how it played out, but it was still very cool to see. Okay, pivoting to maybe the biggest news, aside from all the Grammys, Taylor Swift announced her 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Society, when she went up to accept her first Grammy of the evening, um, which was Best Pop Album. She went up to accept. She revealed that it it is her 13th Grammy that she's ever won. And if you're a Taylor Swift fan at all, you know that 13, it's her lucky number, it's her favorite number. And so she decided to reveal that she's been working on this album for two years, which I'm not sure what that means. 
Does that mean that it's been done for two years or does that mean that it's she's been keeping it secret and working on it over the course of the last two years? Like, I'm still a little bit unsure as to what kind of music or what topics we'll be covering on this album. Um, but she announced new album coming out in just a couple months. And what's funny is prior to the Grammys, everyone thought that she was going to announce Reputation, Taylor's version, which for those who don't know, Taylor is in the process of re-recording her old albums um, so that now she can own the rights to these albums. And so she's been working through them. She still has two left to get through, Reputation and then her debut album titled Taylor Swift. So everyone thought, okay, she's going to announce that Reputation Taylor's version's coming out. She had changed her profile picture prior to the show uh, to a black and white photo. All signs were leading towards Reputation. Her outfit choices as of recently have been very Reputation coded, lots of like snakeskin, black, all those types of things. And so all signs were po pointing towards Reputation. And then she just threw us a curveball and announced brand new album, which is incredible. And honestly, like this woman, she always delivers. She is the gift that keeps on giving. I feel bad. There's so many artists out there who put out an album like once every three or four years. They're never to be seen. They're always like, you know, when they put out an album, it's like, oh my God, and which is, which is cool because it it makes you appreciate the album probably a little bit, bit more. But as a Taylor Swift fan, the fact that she's just always putting out new songs and re-recordings and just like, she, she's just always giving us amazing gifts all the time. And I could not be more thankful. I can't wait for the album. I can't wait to hear what it's about. I'm just very curious. We obviously know she's gone through a lot of changes in her personal life recently breaking up with her longtime boyfriend, Joe Alwyn, in the spring of last year, now obviously dating Travis Kelsey. Will those things be covered in this new album? We shall find out. But I, I genuinely, I can't wait. And I'm going to be counting down the days to April 19th so we can listen to the album and just bask in the glow of Taylor Swift, because this is truly, we're living in the era of Taylor Swift. There's just no denying it. And if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, then I feel sorry for you, honestly. Um, all right, guys, that is it for today's show. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of the Grammys, if you thought anybody was snubbed, who you thought should have won the major categories, what you thought of Taylor Swift's surprise announcement, her new album, what you think it's going to be about, all the things, please share in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, all the things, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.